Hi, and welcome to Chapter 8, Spreadsheet Overview, Risk and Return. So the first thing we want to do is I want to reinforce with you how to calculate the return percentage. So here I have the formula, and I've bro broken out the variables in the formula by their name and their symbol. So it's just a matter of uh, duplicating the formula. So I'm going to take the dividend. I'm going to add that to the ending value and subtract the beginning value. Close parentheses. And then we're going to divide that by the ending value, the beginning value. Okay. So we get a 10% return here. And then once you once you successfully are able to calculate this, you can just pull this down to the other fields. Okay. Now moving down, the capital asset pricing model. So here, I'm actually um, writing out the 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 uh, symbology. So this is the required rate of return RRR equals the risk free rate plus beta times market return minus the risk free rate. So again, we're looking to so, uh, solve this using the formula. So we're going to say we want to add the risk-free rate. Let's start up here, the risk-free rate. And we want to multiply that by beta. And beta is going to, uh, multi we're going to multiply that. Actually, well, we, have, we want to add this here. I want this to be an addition, I'm sorry. So we're going to multiply beta here by the market return minus the risk-free rate. Okay. So I want to close these parentheses. Okay, so you should always have, remember, you should always have whatever parentheses you have on the left, you should have equal amount on the right. And the color denotes what the parentheses are containing. Okay, so here, once again, I'm taking, uh, you can see the colors here, the risk-free rate. I'm going to add that to beta multiplied by market return minus risk-free rate. Okay, so this would be the risk-free rate for this problem. And then you have to also, I'm not going to drag it across because, you know, some students have a bad habit of just taking these answers and entering them into the cell. And I'm now checking cells to make sure that the formulas are in there. So, uh, okay, so moving to, we're looking at portfolio return. So what if we have a portfolio? We want to calculate a portfolio return. So here, the first thing I need to know is for each stock in a portfolio, what percentage is that stock of the total? So here is the total. So I just have to take this stock and divide it by the total to get a percentage. So then I get my percentages. Okay, so see, this won't work because in the formula, I have to lock down the total, the, the total portfolio by putting these dollar signs or absolutes between the bar, between before the B and before the 23 to lock down this cell. And now when I copy it down, I get the correct percentages. So in order to continue calculating it, I need to take the weights times the rates for each of the items. This is how you calculate a weighted average. And then I just need to find the, uh, I'm gonna get the auto sum of this column and the weighted average return or portfolio return would be 12.89 so you can duplicate that down here then moving to the beta we want to we want to um, calculate the new stock price so if the stock is 25 dollars and the market return of 10 percent what is the new stock price so we would what we have to do here basically is we want to elevate the stock price by the beta factor so what we could do is take our beta, multiply it by our effect of the, the market return, and then multiply that by our stock price. So this gives us the overall change. So we know that, so a 10% change in the stock price would be $2.50. But really what we're looking at is a 22.5% difference um, or the 2.25 times 10% is 22.5%, which is the $5.63. So to complete this formula, I would need to install some another set of parentheses and then just say, add this back to the original stock price, and this would be my new stock price. Okay. And the last would be to find the beta, the weighted 
beta portfolio average. And this would be similar to what we did up here, is that you have to find the percentage of, so stock A is $6,500 divided by the total, means it's 32% of the portfolio. And then if I multiply the beta times the percentage, it gives me the weight. So down, so you would complete that for all of these and find the sum of these, um, of the betas, and then you would have your weighted beta similar to what we did up here in the portfolio return. Okay, so that's pretty simple, right? Now let's move on to standard deviation. So here, we're looking at, so here are the, here's, this is, this, this form's a little bit not as easy to follow, but let me just make it a little bit bigger so we can read it. All right. Okay, so question A, on the basis of review, which stock appears riskier and why? Okay, and B, calculate, okay, so B, uh, part A, on the basis of review, which stock seems riskier and why? So basically, just reviewing this, stock A and stock B, which stock seems riskier, um, A or B? So you would probably say B because you have a big dispersion of returns from one to 26% here. So there's a good variation of what your returns here and the returns here are more stable. So you'd probably pick A as the one that's less risky and Y is because there's not as the uh, dispersion of returns is less. So B would be calculate the standard deviation and coefficient of variation for each stock example. Okay, so for stock A, this is stock A. So this is how I would calculate. First, I would need to calculate the average return. So here I would select a formula. Uh, let's go to um, statistics, function statistical, and then we'd look for average. And we would select these numbers. And we get 12% average. Also, if you highlight these numbers, you'll see down here it gives you an average as well. It gives you an average account and a sum for any numbers you highlight in Excel. So this average is 12, and I can just copy this formula here, and I get, these are my two averages. So my average here would be the average I just calculated for stock A. All right, and I'm gonna actually display this as a whole number. I'm not gonna work, you can work with percentages or whole numbers, but you can't mix them up. So. I'm just going to change this back to a number. Okay. And let me lock down the cell so I can just copy this. All right. So then column three in the standard deviation, I need to take the return minus the average return to get the difference between the return and the average return. And then step four, I want to square three. So see this is one minus two. So this is one minus two. 1 minus 2 gives me 7, and I'm going to square 3. So this is 3. I'm going to square them. So I'm going to take um, plus this cell, use my caret, which is above the 6 key, to the second power. So I'm going to square these. And this takes away all the negative signs, which is nice. And then down here, I'm going to find the sum. So we go to formulas and auto sum. So I get the sum. Now to get the standard deviation here, I'm going to take, I need to take the square root of the sum divided by n minus 1. Okay, so there should be a formula, a function, for square root. Let's see, is that under statistical? Um, I'm going to just search for it. Square root. Okay, so here is the function. And I'm going to put this number in here, but I'm going to modify this because I need to take the square root of the sum divided by n minus 1. So for n minus 1, n is the number of permutations. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 permutations. So n is 5. So I'm going to divide this by 4, which is n minus 1. So the sum, this is a sum divided by n minus 1. So we, n is five permutations, so it winds up being four. So now I'm just gonna find the square root of the sum divided by n minus one. And there's my standard deviation for a. Now my coefficient of variation, 
which I don't need because these returns are average. But if I did want to find my coefficient of variation, it would be the standard deviation divided by the average return for A. Let me just cut. Oops. I want to format that. Just give me a number. Okay. So what happens when um, I minimize the minimum? Oh, here, minimize the ribbon. All right, so let's round it to that. Okay. All right. So then we would do the same thing for stock B. So in stock B, we would find the average return, which is here we calculated the average return for stock B. And actually. I'm going to lock that cell down and I'm going to multiply it by 100 so I can because I want to work with um, whole numbers here. You could do whole no everything has to be in percentages or whole numbers if you want this to work. I'm just choosing whole numbers. So let me move this down by grabbing when this white cross turns to a black plus, just move that down. So again, I'm going to take column one minus column two. And then I'm going to square, take column three, and I'm going to square that. Okay. And now I can find the sum of that column. And then, let me see, copy this formula over. Okay, and I get the square root. And the standard deviation would be divided by the average return. Okay. Okay, so we see here, let's go back up to the questions. On the basis of your calculation in part B, this is the part B, we just did part B, which stock is more risky compare the answer to A, and does the coefficient of variation provide better risk comparison than the standard deviation in each case, why or why not? Okay, so what you could do is um, here, the standard deviation for A is higher than B, so A is more risky, which is what we expected when we just looked at the two different columns. The standard deviation here also shows that A is riskier because there's a higher coefficient of variation, but in this case it doesn't matter because we're using the same average return. So what you could do over here is you can, um, for those questions, you can go and say, let's see, do I have, you can say insert, and we can insert, we want to insert a text box. So we can put a text box here. And then you could, um, for each of these questions, A, B, C, and D, you can type in A, uh, stock A is risky, riskier cause of the, uh, and you can actually, if you want, expand this text box is riskier and then you can do B show uh, so C cal uh, left it's not really an answer for B because B just says to do the to calculate which we did here so C is on your basis of part B, which is more riskier, and D, coefficient of variation. So we would say C, stock A has the higher it's the higher standard deviation and coefficient of variation. So that is that stock is more risky. And you can do D. Coefficient variation in this case does not matter because the average returns are equal. Okay. Maybe I could just kind of. Oops. So you can just manipulate the text box. And that's how you can that's how you can enter if you want to enter in the answers 
to these questions up here. You can just simply add a text box here to do that. So that is, pro that is problem, uh, the first example. You will need to do the second example and the third example uh, by yourself. And that is how you complete the spreadsheet for chapter eight. So uh, not the most complex spreadsheet in the t in in the series of spreadsheets we're working on but still good enough to reinforce the basic formulas of chapter eight and the concept of standard deviation and coefficient of variation from chapter eight as well as far as applying the risk to stocks okay so i hope this made completing the spreadsheet homework assignments a little bit easier for you and i will talk to you soon thank you